Today on Garage Athletes, it's a question of the chicken or the egg. Does strength training help sports more than sports help strength training? We talk with Jared Enderton of Enderton Strength and Brittany Beaumont of Play. Both have played sports for a very long time and have been strength training from an early age. We dive into if they think learning sports helped them get so strong and enduring or vice versa. Hey guys, not all athletes are created equal. Individual programs are the best way to reach your full athletic potential, but they're expensive. We've created a training system that allows us to test you and place you into one of our program designs based on your strengths and weaknesses. Because of this, you can get the full effect of an individualized program without the cost. So go check it out under programs at garageathletes.com. Let's talk about low bar front squats. <laughs> Did you yeah. see that picture Edward posted? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We had there's a lot <laughs> of people that it. were tagging each other. So he had the bar on, on his, his back, back and he cranked his, and he elbows, cranked his all elbows up front like he's doing a front squat. He's like, it's a new accessory movement I'm working on. It's called low bar front squats. And he posted it like as a joke and like a Everyone bunch of like people serious. like tagged other people's like, We need to try this and like John got on his ass. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> Edward, you're so... gonna fuck people up. <laughs> people, <laughs> he got so mad. Like, cause people watch Edward because yeah. I mean, he's a good fucking weightlifter. It's like, a good flexibility post... exercise though. <laughs> I mean just, I guess so. Just with the bar like light weight to, uh, <laughs> no, to no, open no, up no, the rack max, position. Max right eighty to ninety percent minimum. Yeah. <laughs> For sets, sets of 10. twelve. For yeah. sets of twelve. <laughs> yeah. You sound like me. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Well, hey, what's going on, guys? We are at another episode oh, of GarageAthletes.com podcast. We are here with the very first episode of the Driven Series, Yay. which is um, ironically at the garage. Mm -hmm. um, so well, you we got to pull out of the garage. Yeah, we haven't technically pulled out of the garage Not yet in the yet. Driven Series. Not driving yet. So um, we're fueling up. We're checking oil levels, and then we're going to get out there. Oil levels, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just take the analogy a little. I, I like I like to take the analogy and I like to you know just, hit it until it's not even. I like yeah I like to out. run it till it's in the fucking ground. Yeah, it's my go to. I the same thing. I like to take shit way too far. <laughs> well, there's no keep talking about it. Okay, yeah. uh, so you know when you got to balance the tires, you got to um, <laughs> rotate them. Got to rotate the tires. You know, make sure you adjust your your mirrors so you know where you've been. The thing about the thing forward. about the driven series is that when your hands are on ten and two, <laughs> I don't fucking know. We are here with on ten and two in life. We are here with Nathan Lowe. What's up, guys? Jared Enderton of Enderton Strength. Brittany 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 Beaumont <laughs> of Play. That's P L A E. Mm -hmm. um, so are line. you so you work for them or you're sponsored by them or both uh both i'm actually like a regional manager for him but i'm also uh an athlete for him mm, that's interesting Does and Brittany doesn't have she refused to put on headphones because she thought it would mess her hair up that's exactly right <laughs> <laughs> no we, she, wa she walked she walked in last because. minute and we decided to do a podcast with her and we didn't have an extra set of headphones so sorry but anyways so yep. Jared is in town. We are uh, shooting a, uh, a seminar, if you will, an online video seminar of, um, of his Enderton Strength. Um, I guess Enderton Strength Seminars, is, is yeah. that what you normally know to call it? Yeah. Um, have you come up with like a really cool name for the online program yet? I haven't yet. You haven't yet? Uh, that's, I wanted to get it filmed first, and I've, been, I've had like 15 different ideas, but I have not been able to be like, oh, that's the one. We should, like, that's you should the put name it out on it. social media. We'll say it right here. Like if someone comes up with a name, they get the seminar for free. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good idea. A bad idea. A if good they idea. come up with a name that I choose. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's just, just everybody, <laughs> just like <laughs> thousands of people. Everyone comes up with a name. It's called Shit Seminar. <laughs> John Doe. Okay, <laughs> free <laughs> seminar. Joe Lifter Seminar online. Um, yeah, so that's cool. So where, where yeah. can they send those ideas into? Uh, just your Facebook, email, or what? Yeah, probably, boy, probably Facebook would be the easiest. Facebook would be the easiest. Yeah, just Jared Enterton on Facebook. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, don't you? How many? How many? We were talking about that yesterday. How many profiles do you have on Facebook? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Truthfully, it's uh, I have one friend page that's full. Yeah, uh, almost full. I deleted some people to to add some last second people, and then I have an Enderton Strength business page. So, but now I'm at the point where I don't know whether to make another a fan page or if I convert my personal profile to a fan page or right. I don't know what I'm doing. So, so right into him about that too. Yeah, just give me life advice. Uh, <laughs> He's taking life could. advice from random people. Yeah, taking the, the media. yeah, taking the go-to. I mean, John North has what, like twelve Facebook pages? That keep <laughs> no, going? he's consolidated. He consolidated down to one, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. He Did just he? Uh, he's in one Facebook page or 
one Facebook uh, profile, and then now he's got like a, I think his it's Attitude Dark Nation Inc. Attitude Nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's Attitude Nation. And I think his. as far as the fan page, I think someone has to make it for you. I think I don't know if you can make your own fan page. I think you can. Yeah, you can. Really? Yeah, you, you can. can. It's not like a Wikipedia. No, I don't mean like you can't do it. I think it's like a little taboo. Oh, it's like I'm famous <laughs> enough. I need to make a fan page for all my fans. It's I mean, just a little. I, I know that's <laughs> I what I mean. That's reached, uh-huh. I think if you've reached your your limit of mm-hmm. friends, I mean that's the next step, right? How many friends is that? It is five thousand, right? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. You're popular. <laughs> well, I mean, five thousand. Like, yeah, it's not. It's, it's a whole it's, lot. It, Facebook's a lot slower than other social media platforms. Like, yeah. plus, the I was older you Facebook. are, the more people you meet in life. Yeah. So. You should, I mean, I'm like an old man by now. Grid but league boss, big time weightlifter. I mean, you're probably definitely big enough. Like you're on a team with Klokov. Yeah, you can make a fan page. But when there's like a high school running back who's like, check out Laquan's fan. Yeah, page. and I've, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've always said that too. Where I'm like, no, I I'll, I I don't want to make one. I won't make one. But then you think about it from marketing. Like if I yeah. don't make my own one, how are people going to stay in tune with what I'm doing or right. this online seminar? I just can't add yeah, any more friends it's, it's like, it's, like it's you're shutting a pretentious down. asshole yeah. like like you, you are a you know you're a professional exerciser right mm-hmm. like at yeah. this point and actually let's take a step back i want anybody who doesn't know who jared enderton is tell us uh, tell us a little bit about jared enderton if i was making a jared enderton cake what would the ingredients be miracle whip <laughs> miracle whip baby <laughs> yes oh we'll uh, talk about that one later uh, yes uh, <laughs> just miracle whip <laughs> it's gorgeous. that's perfect miracle yeah. whip and hair follicles uh, not yeah. many hair follicles <laughs> well facial all right yeah, so yeah so uh, a little bit about me um i started out wrestling that's what i did in high school playing football golf all that stuff uh transferred into strongman right into college uh, so I gained about 115 pounds in a year uh, trying to do the strongman thing. And then not good weight, I'm assuming. Not good weight. Year. At your heaviest, how heavy were you? Uh, like 303. Okay, yeah. And yeah, you're how tall? Um, 6'4". Six, <laughs> I am huge. I am submitting. I am submitting my <laughs> this is where I'm gonna, right now. This is where I'm going to put in that video of you standing next to Ashe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the... Uh, uh, the office where Dwight plays his double life or whatever it is, and he he creates the exact same life. See, in my other life, I would be six four, but okay. uh, I'm five six, five six, and you were three o three, three o three. So that's that's a large male. Yes, so like even sexy distributed. male. <laughs> yeah, it's large sexy like, like male, a, like a large sex kitten. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so <laughs> did strongman until 2010, and then transferred into weightlifting for the last five and a half years. I've been only weightlifting, and then really just three or four months ago, I transferred into. Uh, Got drafted in the grid league, went through the whole pro day, uh, combine, got drafted by Baltimore. So I'm now full-time focusing on grid league and CrossFit, and I just do weightlifting kind of for fun. Yeah, from what I hear, that combine for grid is gnarly. It's just, what, eight hours of max everything? It's no joke, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, the pro day was even harder. Really? Wait, what's the difference between the pro day and the... They're very similar in how they're run, uh, but the pro day we specifically went to was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and the combine was only Saturday, Sunday. So, like, Friday you do all the grid score elements, which is five elements, and then Saturday you test, like, three more things in the morning, and then you run a full grid match. And then Sunday you test two more things in the morning, and then you run a full grid match. So, like... Nope, hard pass. I mean, I... Oh, boy. And when you're coming straight from weightlifting, and I went into the pro day on two weeks of training... I think a lot of people are, because, were you like, like... Were you like me yesterday, training with you, out of breath after, like, three snatches? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I'm doing a three-rep complex. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm drenched in sweat, crying in the corner, and then Jared's yeah. over there hadn't broken a sweat yet doing, like, muscle-ups. But we talked about that. Like, you're used to moving no more than 10 seconds at a time. Oh, yeah. So, like, well, we, going from throwing start... into lifting, nothing. No, yeah. like, you know, I had huge rest time. And then yeah. just with Jared doing his, you know, very lackadaisical workout, warm-up, whatever, I was dead. Yeah, completely dead. absolutely. Yeah. So, but I mean, we'll talk, I want to talk a little bit more about your story because it's anybody that doesn't know it, man, you going from 303 pounds of not healthy to being a grid athlete is pretty damn cool. And yeah. like we can show us like some before and after pictures, but so yeah, so now you are, you, um, Enderton, is it jaredenderton.com or Enderton? Yep. Jaredenderton.com. It okay. used to be Enderton strength. That's where Enderton strength.com, but that's where a lot of people get confused, but now it's jaredenderton.com. <laughs> Figured I'd make it the same on all the platforms. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my website, it's all Jared Enderton. Cool. So, and you are um, you are part of Team Do with John North, Attitude Nation. Yep, the Dark Orchestra dot com. Uh, we we basically online programming. Uh, so we it's online programming where we offer video analysis also. So that's how ours is a little bit different, I think, than 
different programs out there. Is but that. you guys don't just offer weightlifting. You're much right. so like like we're it's doing more with weightlifting. You're doing like CrossFit, bodybuilding, stuff like that too, right? Yeah, I think there's like ten different sports. So I mean, powerlifting, you got different strongman, coaches for different each coaches. One. Yeah, so. I mean, there's things like, you know, bodybuilding and nutrition. John and I are not going to kill. Uh, <laughs> so we have, you know, a, a nutritionist and things like that for the that program. Uh, and I do like the weightlifting for CrossFit program. Uh, you know, CrossFitters looking for extra weight li- weightlifting workouts. And, uh, you know, there's a weight loss program on there. I mean, there's a, there's everything, really. Uh, oh, cool. We kind of make custom for, you know, we've actually turned people down, too, where if they have, like, a crazy – weird sport that they're training for and we know nothing about it and we're like man that's just too far out of our expertise we'll turn them down like, yeah. we, we don't accept anybody and in terms of we're like oh yeah we can definitely do it for you and we're like wait a second what the hell downhill skiing I've yeah never, you know i've never watched that you know what i'm saying like yeah, it's not i think snatch will help with that <laughs> yeah. right? like i mean snatch helps with everything but you don't want to get down the line with them and then say sorry i made this promise to you that we'd be able to help and now we can't so exactly. narrow no. grip snatch helps what with I, everything yeah. Yeah. what i have noticed about the dark orchestra though which is actually really cool is that i've seen a lot of group online programs and stuff where you know you get your program and you're very isolated what i've noticed about the dark orchestra just from the outside looking in is that there is a huge community aspect yeah. And there's like people on the page are helping each other and coaches are helping athletes. Athletes are helping other well, athletes. Yeah, fans of John and fans of, of the Dark Orchestra or Attitude Rabbit. Nation or whatever you want to call it or whatever they are, they're super dedicated fans. Like Into it. Say what you want to about them, whatever it is. And, you know, they, John's I got his haters. Job. But yeah, I think it's super dedicated fans. Yeah, like by the time we go to have video, like uh, we probably have 250 active people on the Facebook page for video analysis. <laughs> Jeez. So it's like a lot of both mine and john's job is to just be on the facebook page a lot critiquing videos yeah uh but by the time like you know it's it's sunday today uh but I, by the time i go to get to the videos tonight i mean there might be six people already commented on that video that mm-hmm. that's not me or john yeah. that are helping each other out so yeah. i mean you're getting a lot of different perspectives on the page and support too and how do you deal with that because obviously it's a lot of people i mean well like, that's I'm not sure. all the properly probably not all giving the proper cues so do you like no don't listen to that first guy he's an asshole well you don't say that at your own team. <laughs> yeah. it's just like how about we go this direction you got to be a little more pc with yeah, it. yeah so uh, that's a really tough one we haven't had to cross the bridge too much where it's too far out because a lot of the guys what's really cool is you see a common theme and i think it's really it's an unconscious effort is that john and i have commented on so many videos now that other people start relaying the same information mm-hmm. but the best part is they're they're saying it was such umph that you know they think it's their idea, yeah. which is awesome. Like, you know, they saw us say it, but maybe they didn't register. And they're like, no, you got to you gotta keep that butt lower longer throughout the ball. It's going to give you more for the finish. Like, that's, you know, it really, it's really helped me, that cue has, you know. Yeah. So well, they're that's saying it. Yeah, the technique grow. Yeah, and they're believing so in what we're saying. it's more like it's coaching from, like, an empathy standpoint as opposed to just, like, telling them. It's like, no, like, I had that same issue, and I did this, and it worked. Like, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah, so we haven't ran into, like, any – Anybody being like, yeah, you need to get your butt six inches in the air or six feet in the air when you start. Like, well, it's like no, a lot of these people crazy. have probably gone to you and John's seminars. Lift too, with right? your chin, guys. So Lift with your that, chin. They have that past experience with y'all's style of coaching and y'all's style of like technique that y'all have created. I did not mean to air quote technique. It is a technique. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we are. <laughs> I, was I see how. Uh, it yeah, I was just saying. No, Nathan's like, one of the technique. haters over here. The no. technique. No, I, I actually we sat in and you know got to see some of your your coaching methodology and philosophy yesterday, and it helped me out a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, so. yeah, and, and I want to talk about that a little bit too because um, what you do is a little bit different. Maybe I don't want to say different, but it's a different, no, it's different take on what you know what a lot of people do, and maybe even so, John, what John teaches in his seminars. So, how do you guys like from a technique standpoint? Do you guys butt heads from time to time, like when you're trying to give cues to people? Oh how yeah, how do you deal with that? Yeah, we'll argue right on the page. Which really is great. Yeah, like I'll be like, <laughs> you idiot. That's it's it's worth yeah. en- it's probably worth enough money just to pay <laughs> that a month to see Jared and John just bitch at each other. <laughs> and I I think it's you know it's so cool because it, it's genuine like we're not like man let's just go on different sides yeah. so we can like create this fun excitement it's like literally no you know we have a different take on the start position on some of the finish positions that you know you saw yesterday too but it's great because it's a great thing to show athletes like hey just try this yeah we're not saying yeah. it's the only way to lift but hey give it a shot it's re- worked really well for me and then Which, john will say hey it's worked really well for me and john says it, it's, my way yeah. is just a way to lift is it the best it's not way? the yes. o- no. It's not the only way. Is it the only way? No. Is it the best way? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But that's good too that y'all argue and stuff because that way the people on team do know that it's not manufactured and they're like, well, we have to agree on this and know that someone isn't like 
keeping something inside. It's all out there, and you can tell that the passion. Yeah, there. and really, the ninety, I would say, eighty-five to ninety percent of technique we agree on. So, like yeah. the whole basis for the pull and the catch and things like that, we agree on. We all agree the bar has to get back into you. We differ a little bit on hip position in the start, say. Uh, and then maybe just a little, little bit on the finish, but it's very subtle. And the general theme in terms of the entire body throughout each lift is exactly the same. Yeah. So it's just like really nitpicking. And if we were to describe our technique and like if we both had two minutes, you might think it's the exact same thing. It's just since it's our job and we go to seminars and we're very in-depth and analytical – we notice differences between each other, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So. Well, and there's well, so much you can analyze about the Olympic lifts, too. Of course, you're <clears> going to differ in some way. I remember listening to uh, Waitland Dapasoba, where y'all, um, the Ilya Ilian video, the world record. Yes. Y'all talked about that for like 45 minutes to an hour, just the first pull. <laughs> no. Just the first pull for an hour and a half, two hours. So there's obviously <laughs> like a lot of stuff that you can go over, and there's going to be things you're going to disagree on, and that's important to disagree on it. Well, yeah. so what what I want to talk about today, the, the main thing, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. I'm sure we'll probably ramble on as we always do, but yeah. I, we've got, you know, you played wrestling, or you you were a wrestler, yep. and, and was it high school and college? Or just high school. Just high school. Yep. So, but pretty good wrestler, right? Safe yeah. to say. You were one state um, in Iowa, got third twice. There you go. Yep. So, um, Nathan, hammer thrower, Ole Miss, top 15 or so top 25 top 25 so in that area. <laughs> just, yeah. let's just keep it safe it's like top 25 just in case someone who knows more than me my hop sounds like nathan's an idiot he sucks <laughs> the so much. He's giving, yeah and then so and Brittany, who uh she, garage athlete and uh part of our uh, regionals team she is uh she was a high level soccer player for uh clemson yep go tigers Division one go tigers <laughs> <laughs> now, y'all don't do Has- this hashtag though. i bleed orange <laughs> you know they have the coolest mascot in all of football what the tigers? There's a lot. We of We share it with a few, of, a few yeah, other schools. Like, <laughs> yeah, but the the paw, I like it. Oh, the paw. Yeah, and oh, it yeah. has just to turn paw. towards one o'clock. Yeah, not the. So I guess not the mascot. There. Yeah, yeah, why is towards that? Uh, it's just because we're different. It's when they start drinking <laughs> over there. No, we're not at noon. We're at yeah. We're a little tilt. We're turned. Like I've picked magnets off of cars to turn them to one o'clock because if you're a real Clemson fan, you know, you <laughs> like, know. Like this bitch doesn't go to Clemson. <laughs> Basic Stop messing with shit. people's cars. <laughs> 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 what like do they teach you at Clemson, you hooligan? <laughs> you're like messing with people's property. So, but we've also, I mean, three, you know, three athletes, um, all you, well, both you guys do CrossFit, more grid league, you know, all weight lift, pretty good weight lifters. So I, I want to talk about the correlation of like, what is the actual correlation of weightlifting or you know the functional fitness world to actual sports, and do you think you doing that sport first before you got into that helped you with it, or do you think it's it's you know it's the chicken or the egg thing? Like, which do you think helps more? Do you think strength conditioning is imperative to sport, or is sport and being active going to give you more of an advantage in strength conditioning, or if you end up getting in the sports world? Let's just yeah, I'll let uh, I'll let Brittany answer first. She's oh, been okay. a little quiet. Kind of yeah, yeah. Let's it's get true. Her on the mic. I think they both coincide with one another. Um, I know. I mean, I wish so badly that all these performance um, schools and trainings before college. I mean, I'm 23 now, so let's see, five years ago, six years ago, I wish I had some of that training before I stepped foot in a Division One. I mean, best conference in, for women's soccer in the ACC. I wish I would have had some anything revolving around strength and conditioning beforehand. But now, <coughs> afterwards, being a Division One athlete has completely made that transition into CrossFit. I mean, what was it? Six months into CrossFit. I've been doing it a year and a half. Six months I came to Jordan. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Justin. Yeah. And I was like, I <laughs> – Jordan. Sorry. Jordan. Yeah, fuck jo- Jordan, Brittany. <laughs> Michael Jordan, the greatest yeah. CrossFit coach been, of all you've time. Damn right. You've been seeing another coach behind my back? <laughs> <laughs> you cheating on me? Wow. Did we just. Oh, un- man. She's been over at Terminus. Yeah. Excuse me. Keep my going. bad, guys. <laughs> but that made that transition just very easy. I mean, obviously, I didn't have the gymnastics background, but the overall strength and core and getting into it. I mean, we did Olympic lifts in college at Clemson for. Well, athletic, and that's so. why, like, you know, and we just had we just had a podcast about, um, you know, a, about being a desk jockey or, yeah. you know, having a full time job and being a high level athlete. But I think what it comes down to now that the sport has grown is that everybody that you're seeing at that high level has a background in sports mm-hmm. and they have it because you have to start it in, you know, from the beginning. So what I'm thinking we're going to see as the sport gets older is people that are in the sport and have been doing it for longer 
yeah, you'll be able to see the people that start with CrossFit and stay with CrossFit the whole time. But right now and for the next like foreseeable future, the only people that you're going to really see are people that were performing at a pretty decent level athletically before they got into CrossFit because of that base. Yeah. And but my but another question that I have specifically for you, do you think that CrossFit would have helped you as a soccer player to a certain extent? Um, you know, obviously being heavier, a little heavier, probably not. Um, just because of the muscle mass now. On yeah, the you field. have more muscle now yeah. than I mean, you did before. I was a, more of a cardio athlete. Um, but general strength would have helped a lot. I mean, just, I can, I mean, I'm five feet tall, if you can't tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my size, even in the ACC, I mean, I was marking players that were 5'8". I mean, it was... You should have got, like, a box for you to stand up on. I know. You just lied to everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> <five> <laughs> Hold on for a second. I wish. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, so... so that's height cool, that, that was big and so overall <laughs> strength here we go oh now uh -huh. you're gonna have to mess with the mic <laughs> look how tall you are does this feel weird does do this I look, like is the world different now do i look skinnier now everybody's like fine with it except for me now <laughs> do you want a box do you want now, a box? Now she's like you guys are still when taller when jerry <laughs> when britney like, walked in and shoes on uh, when yeah. britney walked in and uh and you know justin asked her to be on the podcast jared got so happy like he didn't say anything but i could tell he's like yeah. i'm not the shortest Short guy, guy in the room right now yeah. Back to square one. Still the shortest guy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, Brittany has a good point that it would help in some areas but not others because especially when you're doing a sport in college, a lot of your training has to be very specific to that sport. I'm and sorry. if you're hitting all the angles. I can't. Because you're not professional. You see how easily I went back into that? <laughs> no, Follow but me. it's okay. It's uh, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no. So you do have to – train very specific things for a very large number uh, like large amount of the day so doing something like crossfit you'd probably be hitting some areas that you don't necessarily need and then in some ways could be counteractive to doing a specific sport uh, that's just my yeah opinion. no absolutely i mean when you talk to any high level coach any high level athlete i mean weightlifting whatever it is um and you, you do the whole donnie shankle impersonation thing where we talk about like specific. specificity <laughs> but um but i mean it is like if you're going to be the best at your sport you have to be as specific as you possibly right. can so i think at that level there has to be a base there yeah so well, and that's it, what like it's it, it is very much so it's like a chicken and the egg like even which in, one needs to come first yeah even in strength and conditioning the coaches will even say it's olympic lifting is sport specific right so so it's not like I was pushing, um, catching a clean at the very bottom all the time. It was like more powers. Right. Um, just very explosive movements, yeah. which definitely helped on the field. I mean, yeah. major difference. But necessarily, I mean, I didn't even jerk once until I stepped a foot into this gym. Yeah. So. Yeah, you and going back into that. a lot in yeah, soccer. No. So. It's yeah, and going back into that first question that you had for this, it's like, does it, did it help? Yes. Like, uh, tremendously. I mean, I'm not a crossfitter, but weightlifting for me, I was lucky in a way that Brittany wasn't is that I had John Coffey when I was in high school. So mm -hmm. it's like I throwing in high school uh, for a national team, I had John Coffey is where we trained. And I did learn the lifts before I went to college, which was a huge leg up because a lot of kids, they just train their sport and they do some like nonsense power cleans with metal plates at their high school. And then they get into college like, oh, man, it's all so new. And the strength coaches have to start from square one. Of course, I was doing most stuff wrong when I was with John <laughs> because I had a different coach at the time. I was just in coffees, and I would see him over there in the yeah, corner. Yeah, he wasn't there look, coaching you. And I'd ask you, him yeah. questions, and it would be more like, just get your back tight, for gosh dang hammer thrower. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to mess yourself up like that. But uh, And a lot of it was like small corrections like that. My technique was still terrible. My technique is still terrible. Not after – seeing the technique yesterday that I need. I'm really excited about lifting today after this. <laughs> yeah, we're going but to having this. that having that base was very important and being able to transition into um, getting into the Olympic lifts in college with a little more knowledge under my belt. And that definitely having access to that knowledge every time I came home, because when I did come back into town, I did go back to John and he did give me the more specifics about the lifts, which got me into the sport, got me into loving weightlifting. And now it's the avenue that I'm going to be pursuing after throwing. So it definitely helped. It definitely helped my performance in throwing, even though I was probably going a little further down in depth than I should have for a power event like uh, hammer throw. I probably would have benefited more from some box squats and some quarter squats, but I like to squat deep. So it's just what I did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think also your situation is a little bit different from – you know, like a ball sport or something mm -hmm. like that, because you you did track and field. So right. I think that has that's a closer. I don't want to say correlation, but it's like it's almost it's closer to strength and conditioning itself than like say, 
you know, football or basketball or something like that. Right, well, it's like hip that. shoulder separation. It's grinding through power positions. I mean, it's very similar in theory to weightlifting. It's your manipulating angles and, and body positions to heave something as far as you can, whereas weightlifting, it's getting something as heavy as you can above your head, but very much manipulating the levers of your body with your shoulders and your hips in the same way that you have to manipulate the levers of your body in weightlifting. So they, that's, that's probably why it was so intriguing to me yeah. and why the transition has been better <laughs> than yeah. most people starting mm -hmm. out in weightlifting because I have that base of being able to break down movement and being able to figure out how to move my levers in a way that's going to be most efficient. Yeah. Yeah. So Jared, what do you think for you as far as like wrestling? Cause you started with wrestling before anything. I'm assuming you probably had gym class or whatever when you were in no, high school. I think my first wrestling tournament, I was four. Oh geez. So yeah, that was literally oh, wow. the first thing. Was it actually yeah. a tournament so, or did your no, parents it was a just throw you in with another kid in the garage? No, it was a tournament like kindergarten, uh, it's, it's K through through second grade. So it's kindergarten, oh, wow. first grade, second grade. So I think I wrestled like two second graders and a first grader. And I was like, I got to see some just pictures. Just going into kindergarten. Yeah. 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 Kids yeah. falling on each other? Was it yeah. competitive? No, yeah, I got last. Like okay. my first three years in wrestling. <laughs> I, I like never won. I was terrible all the way to like junior high. But um, he was the only one with a beard. Yeah, probably. So the, intimida the intimidation old, factor yeah. was there. He had the full beard. Yeah, beard. so I mean, I, I, but growing up, I would always golf, always play football, basketball, every single sport there was. But I started lifting pretty seriously in sixth grade. So like, so from four to sixth grade, um, you didn't really have a whole lot of strength conditioning. It was just sports. Just Do sports. you honestly think that through your wrestling career that doing something like CrossFit would have helped your wrestling or would it have hurt it from the additional, you know, doing that type no, of thing? No, it would have helped. It would have helped. I think, I think the carryover from sport, uh, I mean, I think obviously it's huge. Like wrestling, the kinesthetic awareness. So you feel the guy pulling and pushing on you and it's almost like, on a bar you feel the bar coming up or back to you or you feel it's away from you and you know when to get underneath it because you can tell when it's giving you more pressure or less and in certain times to whip around it or you know there's all those little things that you your body can feel or and you can feel your body in space um yeah. and maybe it's from wrestling or, or weightlifting but i kind of mentioned it people are like man how long did it take you get, to get a muscle up and literally probably i don't know maybe a year ago i hopped on rings to try one for the first time and i got two or three in a row yep yeah first time i literally ever laid my hands on the rings but i'm like well i watched a video I was like, i've seen millions of them right but i'm mm -hmm. like oh you just rip your hips up there and then you turn over yeah you know how to use your hips <laughs> yeah i know wrestler, how to use my hips like and we say it all the time on this podcast is is you know i think wrestlers and gymnastics or wrestling and gymnastics are they have the most carryover Absolutely. of any sport to anything like if yeah. you were good at gymnastics and if, if you were a good wrestler you're going to learn things so much quicker because you understand how to use your body. You know where your body is in space at proprioception, yep. as you're talking about, um, better than anything else. Like, yep. there's no way you're going to be any good at wrestling and not know how to use your hips and extend right. your hips. And you're going to have a super strong lower back. Like Jared was saying, his dad used to make him sneak around the department store to yep. build his lower back. And just yeah, stuff actually, like that. no, that's a really funny tour, uh, story. <laughs> tell, tell him about that. Yeah, so like when, uh, probably sixth or seventh grade, or maybe I don't know what, maybe it was fifth grade. Uh, but when I was very young, maybe fourth or fifth grade, very young, uh, I used to always come home from practice, and or my dad would watch a lot of practices too. And I'd be like, man, my lower back, and I'd stand up out of my wrestling stance, you know, because my low back would be getting tired from staying in my stance for so long. Yeah, like, <laughs> and you know, it's part of growing as you're getting taller. Uh, I probably stopped growing probably around that same age, but. Uh, so I always say, oh, you know, it's getting tired. And he's like, well, how much time are you in there in practice? And I'm like, well, we do like 30 second or minute goes or two minute goes, you know, and then we stand up and that's it. And then you go again and repeat that. He's like, oh, well, what if you could stay down there for like 20 minutes straight? And I'm like, oh, well, I could, I think I could beat anybody. Like, I'd be <laughs> awesome. He's like, okay, let's go right now. So we were shopping like at Walmart getting groceries. And then he's like, okay, just you're going to walk around the store in your wrestling stance. Oh my until we're done grocery shopping i'm like yeah like he wasn't he wasn't forcing it on me it all wasn't the a, looks yeah. at walmart you started yeah. the people of walmart.com yeah. Oh, yeah well <laughs> what it's is like this, yeah people this think seven year old gotta... bearded kid walking around like a hunchback with his dad at walmart <laughs> yeah just his, creeping his, i'm like he's walking behind his dad dad do we need do we need honeycomb <laughs> <laughs> he's just getting it <laughs> yeah oh man what so, is he hiding from what is he doing but people it was so like, good like the bags of yeah. cereal because they never put the bags at the top you got to bend over to get the bags of cereal that's what oh, we always got the at, knockoff yeah. anyway but it was so good because it was like his idea but yet i was so on board with it it wasn't yeah. like forcing me to do it you know whereas if it was like no you're gonna do this i'd be like 
yeah, and then I probably hate sports. You know what so I mean? But I that was it like was awesome. your, that was like your first. Um, that was like your entrance into strength and conditioning. Like, yeah. oh, if I do something outside of the sport that helps me with the sport, I'll be better with the sport. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and at that Step young one. age, it instilled that work ethic in you to where you know you know that you have to do stuff outside of the gym just innately because that's how you grew up. Yeah, and like every time we turn the corner, and like he would be just in front of me, I'd stand up and I'd be like, oh god. <laughs> and then he, he looked hiding. back at, and he knew I would be standing up. You know, he looked back. He's like, oh, good job. Stay down there. Even though I knew out of the corner eye, he saw me going. <laughs> yeah. Interval, oh interval work I at seven. A, yeah, yes. I, had a, I had a similar growing up experience, except for me, it was punishment because I was an idiot. So I, I, I ran around and talked a lot and I, I, you know, got into trouble a good bit. And my parents uh, never got spanked or anything like that. But I did have to run logs from one side of the yard to the other. Like we had almost an acre backyard. Yeah. I'd have 20 logs on one side. I'd have five minutes to run them to the other side. Dad be on the back porch with a stopwatch. And then when we moved from that, I just had to run stairs. Oh, so he was actually giving you that. See, with me, it was more like real world. Like we, we lived in Florida, so it never got below like 75. Mm -hmm. But we still made fireplace or we still made a fire in the fireplace. Like right. if it got below 80, there is a fire. Just yeah. because we're like, cool, it's cold. You know, even we're swimming at Christmas. But so we, we we lived out in the U.S. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we just, like, that's something that you don't get as a kid. Like, if you live up north, you don't, you know, you take that for granted. Like, I didn't see snow till I was, like, 18. Oh, dude, I grew up in Texas. You know? Yeah. So, so like 100 and whatever. But we, so we would have, we would have a fireplace, and we lived kind of out in the woods or whatever. You know, like, we had a garden and a bunch of trees, so we cut trees down. We had this big, you know, fire log area out in the back or whatever. So yeah. I would be, like, six, seven years old, and my dad would would throw wood on me because we got to take it up there and yeah. I would just lay my hands out like that and he'd start putting wood on it and yeah. I said he's like is that good he's like no I can do more he's like can you do more no and it was like how much wood can I hold and carry from the back of our yard about a hundred yards to the to the front house like at like five or six years yeah. old so I was like doing loaded carries yeah you know with all this wood as a kid and like you know I probably never even thought about it until just then but like that was probably my Huge, first experience yeah. like moving heavy loads for time and even though yeah. it, was, it was technically punishment for me uh, but I never resented my parents for it because they're always really good at explaining to me why but at the same time, uh, having that work ethic growing up and that, well, they had to, they had to do it that way because they realized they couldn't take stuff away from me because I just play with a rock on the ground. Like right. nothing bothered me. And then they realized at a young age, this kid really doesn't like cardio. So they just made me do cardio. We moved from Texas. I was running up and down stairs, you know, but I mean, we didn't have shit growing up anyway. So it was yeah. hard to take stuff away from me. So yeah. So like, it was more like, but you can call it punishment, but you can call it motivational consequences. Oh I yeah. Mean, that's really what it was. It's like, man, I don't want to do this so if i if, to not do this i probably need to be better but i mean i run stairs now so it's like at my apartment complex at old miss it's just that habit even though i really hate cardio and even though i'm really not good at it it's just the 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 knowing that it has to be done to make me better and then i, I think that's definitely what made me a uh, successful hammer thrower in high school and college is because i mean shoot man i none of the other kids were doing that and i graduated high school with 28 inch thighs it's because i was running stairs because i kept messing <laughs> yeah. up so yeah i definitely that's, have that's why there. i got a two-story house with the bathrooms are only upstairs in hopes it'll <laughs> on my legs so yeah if I you want to go pee you've got to walk upstairs but i think i haven't been i've just been going in going backyard. outside yeah, yeah that's what we do i do that it's just a lost art too though i mean i I, I don't even know how old I was when I started working on the farm. I mean, I grew up in a town of 800 people in Iowa. Like, oh my gosh. Everybody does farm work, you know. So, I mean, baling hay, picking sweet corn, detasseling, walking beans, uh, shelling corn, That's your strength and conditioning hay. right there. Jeez, I mean, literally awesome, everything though. every single day in the summer. So, like, it's most kids, I mean, growing up, all my friends, we'd all be out picking rock for 8, 10 hours a day. And then afterwards, we're like, yeah, we get to go lift, you know, by the time we're in oh, junior yeah. high, like <laughs> literally. And then we'd go to the pool. Like we had the lifestyle of like, we thought it was the greatest thing ever. If we yeah. just, that sounds like a UFC backstory. Yeah. I mean, it, it was literally, <laughs> but I think the wrestling from a young age and everything, it, it, we really enjoyed the farm work. And I know that sounds weird, but like Brock Enderton, we, it's yeah, fun, yeah. <laughs> we loved it. Like it was so fun because we'd be competitive. Like. Who can Turn pick, everything into a game. Yeah, right? who can? We would race to every rock. Wait, isn't Brock Lesnar from Iowa? Where's he from? from? South Minnesota Dakota. Or South, South Dakota. Dakota. He One of those to, up there. He wrestled at uh, Minnesota. Yeah, but you see him doing the yard work and like moving those ropes, and he's yeah. bailing hay, and he's yeah. got the. Big well, he gear. has a farm, and the, the, yeah, it's that's got to be the craziest physical specimen I've ever seen. He he was a wrestler. He he no, won he's a freak in, athlete, he won yeah. in CAA's. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like that was, I mean, and he did grow up on a farm too. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I didn't. I, yeah, I guess it was Dakota. Hey, you got to have those lower back muscles from a young age of bailing hay to be able to throw people. 
people around like that. We've got him on next week, by the way, guys. Yeah, Brock Lesnar, (laughs) shout out. (laughs) Hit me up on my Facebook. Um, You never called me back, bro. I sent you a message on MySpace. What's going on? (laughs) Yeah, I was checking out your Zanga page. (laughs) It's been so long. So so what was your, Brittany, when you were doing, uh, you started playing soccer at what age? Okay, not like you guys. I actually didn't like to sweat till I was like 10 years old. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't girl. play soccer. I didn't start playing soccer till I was 10. And then I wanted to do everything. I was like full tomboy, bring it on, soccer, tennis, swimming, um, gymnastics. I like wanted anything and everything. So I started playing soccer when I was 10. And then by like 11, 12, I was like, I'm going to play college soccer at UNC. Yeah. Is that how you said it? You threw yeah. your hands up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be that girl. I'm going to be a Tar Heel. Tar Heel. Well, mm. if you guys okay. don't know, growing up, that was like, I mean, that's what started collegiate school uh, soccer for women was UNC. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Just so you know. That was the place to go. I yeah. know that was, that was the place. If you soccer. don't know, yeah. now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah. it was, um, I wanted anything and everything. I ended up swimming and playing soccer till, I mean, all through middle school high school um it's a good swimming. combination yeah swimming was really just to keep me in shape for soccer but i mean we had a pretty good high school swimming team we went to state um but at what if you were you were playing soccer at what age did you did you guys have a strength program that the coaches put made you go like doing power cleans and stuff like no that? see we didn't have like a performance facility or any of that before i mean at my high school there was like a lifting program but it was like the football coach putting the football guys through yeah. So I mean, I went into college D one soccer, not like lifting a weight. Oh, okay. It. The, so, I so, I also so blew out my knee my freshman it. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the other side of that. Yep. Yeah. So I tore my ACL, MCL, lateral medial meniscus. I don't really have wow. any cartilage in my left knee. So there is That's something. There is something to be said about specificity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and too much of Specific. it. Maybe had you been doing some of your volume of work in the strength in the Absolutely. strength room or the gym, maybe it would have helped you. Maybe not, but you know, maybe it would have helped you. I mean, by freshman year, if you look at my uh, freshman year to senior year at Clemson, the athlete I was and became like right before I left school, it was I mean, it's amazing and just how much when you add it in when you add yeah. it in the strength yeah. and conditioning yep yeah. you come in as like a, a soft freshman wearing all the preppy sc- stuff and you know senior year you got abs and traps and you exactly know you're beating right. people up in the parking lot yeah, yeah. 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 but i was people. and it's crazy i mean even stepping in freshman year i was 10 years uh 10 pounds lighter um or 10 pounds heavier my freshman year by my senior year i was just a lean machine yeah well, but you did nothing a but lot of soccer and yeah. c- cardio and yeah, cardio, yeah. 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 But it, it, it was dancing. great. If I would have had it my freshman year, I mean, I got thrown off the ball. I didn't have a lot of core strength. Um, like I said before, I'm five feet tall. So being thrown in a, you know, the ACC and going against players that are, I mean, five, six, seven inches taller than me, it was hard. And yeah. So, yeah, but that is an interesting point, too. Like, you know, and the whole question is, like, is strength conditioning that important to sports or is there a bigger correlation from sport going into a strength conditioning now that strength and conditioning is a sport, right? Right. So, but, I mean, injury is a big part of that. Like, did did you struggle with injuries throughout your career, like in high school and, like, moving forward, or were you always kind of – you didn't really deal with it or – No, I didn't really – only my junior year I had – uh, partially torn my LCL on my knee. A uh, guy picked up my leg and twisted it sideways, which oh. it's really hard to tear that outside ligament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't wrestle for like a month and a half leading up to state. And then I just did one sectionals, one districts. Thought I was going to have to pull off yeah, out of each match because I was in so much pain. Went into state and literally just lost because I was out of shape because I couldn't wrestle for a month mm-hmm. and a half. I mean, you do what you can on an airdyne and stuff, but it's, it's not the same as wrestling yeah. shape, yeah. right? So that was the only one really I ever had until two years ago when I blew out my hip. Um, that was it. I mean, th- that's really the only serious injury I've had. I've, everybody's had little aches and bruises, but usually I stay pretty healthy. And I also think it's because... You had that farm background. Yeah, the farm background, but it's also... No, I mean, you laugh, but no, it's, it's totally true. true because yeah. what, you're, true. what are you learning to do? You're learning to be strong in odd positions. Yeah. You can't pick up a bale of hay in a proper position. Yeah. It doesn't happen. I mean, like, I, yeah. I grew up in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> you know, and it, it's like, and I would run logs and I'd do stairs, but I got hurt in high school. I, I broke a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you do, I did rugby, I did football. So it's like crack three ribs, bruise my sternum. I've had a, cu- a concussion or two and, you know, some stuff with my back. But I mean, it's all, it's all better now. But, yeah. um, 
Yeah, it took a little while to get better. Back from it. Well, I think it's like stronger now because yeah. of it. I think because yeah. you have to and learn how to rehab early. Something that's a lost art too. Like I mean, I played football every year. It was like we had a very small school, of course. So I mean, I you know oh, lettered same. my freshman year <laughs> oh, yeah. in high school for varsity. Every you male know? was on the football literally, team. Literally, you know, <laughs> so like school. everybody. I mean, has like forty carries a game. So I mean, you always come with bruises, no serious injuries. But I think a, a lost art that wrestling really teaches or even football if you do it correctly being is, a fucking man is how to fall correctly oh, yeah <laughs> well, like i'll see people fall on a important. box jump and i'm like ow well, what the, well, where's your body you, awareness like don't you roll with it like i learned <laughs> how did you end up on your skull yes like i mean it was it, a 20 inch box they're just, just gonna the lose their year. footing and they're just gonna let gravity happen and have no say in the matter whatsoever yeah or like people are like aren't you scared to do like a backward roll on the rings and stuff i'm like no no i i know how to roll through things and when i feel my body twerking i let go and i know where i'm gonna land because of my momentum like mm. i've done this three thousand times in wrestling or three million yeah. where if somebody has my leg and they're taking me down i know exactly how to roll so yeah. i don't get hurt and so you can try to get up or like just how to miss correctly whether it's in weightlifting or it's in uh, wrestling or you're on yeah, the rings or it's difference. like oh yeah you could stay healthy so long when you don't fight the momentum in bad situations when you roll with it literally but it comes well, to back fair, to that proprioception yeah. and and not to like you know we're talking about actual wrestling not to like go off the subject and like pro wrestling but when you see those guys fly off from what 10 20 feet up in the air and land and it's like you know it's like okay yeah wrestling's fake or whatever predetermined but like if a normal person were to actually do that they would break their back and yeah. their neck and they would be paralyzed well, those, those guys, guys have spent so much time understanding exactly how they need to do it to make it look like it hurts well i don't know much about wd but i'm willing to bet 100 percent of them came from some kind of fighting background whether it's judo karate wrestling jiu-jitsu but every one of those sports and and on the women's side gymnastics and women's fighting sports are the two like in my opinion highest for body awareness because in wrestling literally every day in something like wrestling or jiu-jitsu you're manipulating your body and you're figuring out how to use your body as like a chessboard and you know all the moves and you've memorized your chessboard uh, you see like high level chess players they can beat a computer because they're three steps ahead of the computer because they know that chessboard better than anyone and yeah. like a high level wrestler high level fighter high level gymnast has memorized the chessboard of their body and they know every single move they could possibly do and they know how to react when something changes yeah they not only know their own bodies but they know what's around them too they're very aware of what's oh, yeah. going on around them <laughs> and and like that's that's super important if, if we're talking about pro wrestling as well but my question specifically to jared is so we're basically saying yeah there's a correlation back and forth between strength conditioning and sports obviously um you know maybe more from sports to strength conditioning than vice versa is what i'm getting out of everybody like strength conditioning helps sports but having that sport background to begin with at such an early age really sets you up for success to be explosive and strong and have that proprioception but at what age would you recommend a child girl or boy regardless of their sport um to start learning and and what sh what should it look like should it be more like hey go out there and have fun and play games learn how to jump up on stuff and carry bells of hay or should someone in eight be in the gym room learning how to do a squat as early as possible yeah so uh, well first i have a question for you do you only bring up the pro wrestling because you're going to wwe tomorrow i'm night? stoked about it yeah. <laughs> been excited if about anybody it. follows me on instagram i i have a i i grew up watching wrestling i, I don't i don't give a shit i come over to his Judge house me or whatever. before uh before want, jared gets in i want to give you a stone cold stunner right now yeah, I do. we do. can do it as long as i can coup de gras your ass um <laughs> i so, don't know any of the lingo all i know so, is i came to J justin's house and he was already watching documentaries about WWE. i'm sure well, i wanted to get it in because i know you guys weren't going to watch it or whatever so yeah so i didn't watch wrestling for about 15 years i stopped when i was about 15 16 years old um around the whole um same time you dating stopped myself. believing in santa and basically yeah. yeah well no what do you mean what, what are you talking about santa? <laughs> what, what are you telling me right now i'm telling you that wrestling what about santa and santa does santa a wrestler yeah, yeah, he is. Oh, okay. He's, I didn't. He's probably one of I didn't Mick watch Foley's that promotion. Egos. I didn't know. He's yeah. from Paraguay. Actually, Mick Foley, I think, did dress up like like Santa <laughs> yeah. one time. But anyways, yeah, around the whole the NWO and the WCW, WWE. If anybody watches that, it's called the Monday Night Wars or whatever. Blah blah blah. I'm not going to get into it because it's boring. If you don't care about wrestling. Um, but then I didn't watch it for like 15 years. And then for some reason, I got a chance to do some video work for some wrestlers, some of my old idols, um, and it kind of just rekindled it. And now I don't, I don't give a shit. F you guys. I'm, I love, I love <laughs> well, pro wrestling. Well, that's the difference is when you're growing up, you watch it 
because you think it's real and you're following the I character mark, stories yeah. and stuff. And then you you think, oh, that's amazing. And then you get away for it for a while. And then you get that strength and conditioning, the sports background. You understand bodies and stuff like someone in your position. And then you see wrestling again and go, you I don't care if it's it, fake. Yeah. That's a freak athlete yeah. out there. So in the beginning, know? they call them marks. It's, and that's somebody who believes that it's actually real. And the stuff that you're seeing on there, like these guys are really having these feuds, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then um, as you get older or whatever, or someone who knows about they call them smarks, which yeah. is basically somebody like, yeah, I know it's predetermined, but fuck you. It's still amazing. Well, you get to like, appreciate them as still an the best athlete, athletes and you out also there. get to appreciate them as someone that can sell their brand and someone who can make that popular. And you respect that from a business standpoint, like, wh- too. What other sport where can you get somebody where they look like a bodybuilder, they move like a gymnast, and they're as strong as a strong man? Cloak off. Like, they don't quite <laughs> move like gymnasts. <laughs> no, they Dude, don't. So, <laughs> some of them Watch do. some of them. I mean, when I'm telling some of these guys do like triple flips, back flips off the rope and land perfectly every single time That's after true. they've been working out and breathing heavy for 30 minutes. Gymnasts don't even do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's literally, and I, like, I'll get off on my soap. I'll look get at, off on. Look at Dwayne the Br- Rock Br- Johnson. already up on a box. I'll get off my soapbox. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I am, a, I am a wrestling fan, but go ahead. Yeah. Continue. What was the question? I don't Wait, I have a question. She asked if I was just bringing up pro wrestling because I'm going to Raw. So well, no, we're going to WWE that. Raw tomorrow. So because I do CrossFit now, do you think I can be a WWE diva? You're too short. Absolutely. I'm too <laughs> short. No, no, some of those chicks are short as I hell, I remember, man. yeah, we were at the Arnold and we met a couple of the, the diva girls and they were yeah. teeny tiny. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, I think Life you should goals. be. Life I think goals. you should be. Yeah, and you got it. Well, okay, <laughs> I know some people who can teach you wrestling. I've seen some Good. pictures. You got a pretty serious game face. Yeah. <laughs> that right there. I'm terrified. Wow. Yeah, Stop exactly. it. Stop it. We got to come up with your wrestling <laughs> name, though. Wrestling name? Yeah. I, I, I don't can't. know. I'm we'll we'll figure come. it out. It'll yeah. It'll Give me more coffee. It'll figure but, itself yeah. out. It's answered the question, finally. I did First, I did used to like pro wrestling quite a bit. Um I mean, it's not that I dislike it. It's just I feel almost bad supporting it when I've been in uh, real wrestling, so yeah. to speak. And I yeah, see yeah, the yeah, Olympic yeah, yeah. athletes and I'm like, man, like they're struggling to get by. And I'm like, I hate when people are like, oh, yeah, pro wrestling. I'm like, that ain't pro wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, well, like, it's, it's just well now it's them. called sports entertainment. Yes. Like yeah. it's it's not really pro wrestling anymore. And like well, those are yeah, right. okay. well, I see from Jared's perspective is because you see them going out, oh, you see them partying and stuff, and they're getting all this recognition. When the really really high level wrestlers, like Olympic level wrestlers, aren't getting a whole lot of credit. It's like I went to college with a guy who right now he's traveling the world wrestling people, and he has a good little following of the people around him. Shout out BJ Fatrell, you're doing great. Uh, and he's killing it in the wrestling world right now, like absolutely killing it. And he doesn't have the recognition of someone who gets hit with a chair once a week. No, absolutely. But here's the thing. It's uh, like that is still an avenue. Like you said, a lot of those wrestlers are are they are able to get into that because they start wrestling. So it's like, OK, so you you're an Olympic level wrestler. Mm-hmm. Like, what is your option? Right. Like, OK, you can be an MMA fighter or you can be a WWE superstar. It's if, like, what do you if do? If you're after? also jacked and, yeah. and big. Right. Well, a lot of like, these Olympic athletes, they get done and they have no options. So it g- gives an avenue. It's, it's like a gymnastics. Are you like, it's like, OK, you're a girl, you're a level 10 gymnastics. Like, how am I going to make money off of that? Right. I coach gymnastics right like that's that's your option because you've been right? doing nothing but that for like 15 years and yeah. the same thing any olympic athlete they've been doing this one thing for 15 years and they've been pushing all the other priorities aside to chase that goal and then when they get done and they, they go into the, the metal, real world and they get in there they go okay now what yeah now what and yeah. they get there it's like well i mean you can coach throwing at a high school well, you put it on your resume is like i went to the olympics as a you know a, a gymnast like okay that's cool here's cool. a spatula yeah, and the this. oven has to be on at 5 50 <laughs> right yeah. so, so it's yeah athletes, make sure you, you say know. welcome to mo's well i don't think that happens a whole lot you'll see some instances where it does happen but i think athletes who get to that level have built the like very important building blocks of hard work ethic and well, hopefully they went to college and, and hopefully they went you know, to college they use but that even even not i mean you know i mean i think i don't know if Klokov went to college but well, I he's mean, like a master of sport i don't know what master, exactly yeah, the requirements right. are like in you have to lift 400 kilos yeah i pretty uh, much think that is yeah but, but i mean but look at him i mean he has i think officially finished his weightlifting career mm-hmm. from what i hear i thought he said he was going to try and do the 2016 no there, you have been living in under a rock yeah yeah no, i haven't, he, I haven't he, paid you know, attention just to him he officially retired from weightlifting he did uh, okay. like three weeks before our grade match yeah oh, pretty okay. much but, but you take someone like that who has finished his olympic career 
who might not necessarily have all of the you know educational background but he has all of this knowledge for movement and body types and stuff he said how do i channel that into a way to provide for my family he's got to do something because he was getting paid by the government to be a weightlifter and now yep. he's not i mean russians get a, a, a large stipend right especially if you're at the level of klokov to weightlift and then i'm assuming if he retired he's not getting that money anymore well, so, i mean you yeah. see athletes weightlifters here who are making a career out of the job like like john like you like yeah. hopefully me like justin like we're taking the sport of fitness and being able to turn it into something that we can support ourselves on like feed our family well, well you also built a brand around yourselves yeah i mean all yeah, of you klokov has that yeah he has y'all are starting to do that you know building up your own brand and that's one way to team winner. Team winner. Exactly. Team, team winner. Win yeah. No, he kills it, man. And all the yeah. again team faster winner. equipment. I mean, oh, he set up CrossFit, uh, CrossFit Pandora's box for y'all, right? Um, I'll have all again. I've got, I've got a question. Right? Well, well, I paid. Yes. <laughs> yeah. but, but, yeah. <laughs> theory. This is before y'all were teammates. Did you wish yes. you had waited and then be like, "Hey, bro, why don't yes. you?" Yes. Could you kick over a crazy <laughs> discount code? But, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. By hooking us up, it means that I ordered it online <laughs> and they sent it to our door. Yeah. Yeah. Type in Klokov VIP, seventy five percent off. Really good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, I got a question. Serious question. Do you think in Russia when you retire, do on, they like on. give Should you a golden bottle of vodka? Instead mm. of like a golden watch oh, or something? Oh, he actually told me it's a big myth that Russians just love vodka. He told me his favorite is white wine and big myth, big myth. I don't know where this come from, that <laughs> Russians love vodka. Probably I think every movie ever. ever. Yeah. Every, yeah. <laughs> every movie where uh, where Bruce Willis is the, uh, the protagonist, all the antagonists are long-haired Russian dudes drinking... And smoking cigarettes, drinking drinking vodka and smoking cigarettes. Yeah, like after our good league match, like, you know, we're like, oh, we'll just have a few drinks or whatever. And I like, go, oh, Kloka, what, you know, you're Russian. We know you like vodka. What do you want? He's, oh, Heineken. Uh, my favorite white wine. White vodka, wine. big myth in Russia. People <laughs> think we drink it and love it. No, no, no. Also, <laughs> yeah, it's like all the myth Americans are fat and like bacon. Yeah. <laughs> also, y'all <laughs> white wine all too. <laughs> never heard that. that. <laughs> yeah, what was that? What? I've never heard Santa that. Claus? What? Get out of here. I all right, I'll, get, I'll get all the way back to the question. Go about yeah. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how young should kids start? So oh, oh, that yeah. was what we were talking about. Okay, okay, yeah. It. It's I been in my head for 20 minutes. Somebody took their Adderall. <laughs> nope. I, I remembered it. I was just waiting to come back with it. So the, it's a complicated question, but in, in short, uh, as, as soon as they can. Uh, right. Because we used to have it mandatory. All of us grew up. Uh, we're all in that age. Maybe not these two. They're young pups. But me and you, you and I, we grew up when... When we were in kindergarten, first grade, we had PE for an hour a day. We mm -hmm. had recess. Okay. After school, our kids were like, you better stay outside and play till six when you come home for supper. Like, when you're in fifth too, and sixth bro. grade. Like, well, why would you go inside? And now, so like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we would cry when we had to come in like at noon in the summer to go mm -hmm. eat with the dad when he was on break. I'm like, oh, we want to keep playing football or we want to keep building this fort in the woods. Like, yeah. Now kids, around, they sticks. cut PE <laughs> programs. They cut, you know, like it's man, it's like a, it's optional, or they'll have it twice a week. They're <laughs> not getting the same amount of movement fundamentals that we yeah. are. And no. so I think a winner. Everybody gets a medal. Yeah, like as soon as you can get them doing. I don't care if it's capture the couch or dodgeball, yeah. which I can't play capture dodgeball what? or whatever. Capture the couch. We used to have a game. It was we called a chase, and it was basically just like intervals with bikes. So like you would hide in the neighborhood and then someone would be riding around the bike looking for you and when they saw you or when you thought that they were going to find you you got the fuck on your bike and rode as hard as you could to try and get away from them and then hit again oh wow <laughs> but I think, yeah jerry makes a really good point it's very important to get those movement patterns in kids minds early i was reading a book i don't remember the exact title i think it was called the athletic gene but you look at like the top 0.001 percent of fighters like a floyd mayweather or like uh you know mlb pitcher they after like the 10,000 hours that you hear about keep going with that and they've like I said earlier memorized that chessboard they're able to chunk physical information much much faster than the average human being so it's like you get in the ring with like a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and you try to make a move you've never done it before he can think of every single move that you're going to do and it's totally subconscious he doesn't actually think oh he's doing that I'm going to do this it's all innate and it's muscle memory the same way like a major league pitcher when you're hitting Innate, against, that's a new name. That's innate. a new nickname, Innate. When you're batting against an MLB pitcher, it's going literally faster than the eye can see. Everyone in the major leagues at the top level has way better than 2020 vision, and they still can't see the ball. But they have seen so many pitches, and they're years and years and years of practicing this, that by the position of the pitcher's arm and the way they can see the laces in the ball, they can predict where the ball's going to be, which is absolutely insane because they can chunk that information. So the sooner you can get someone in an area where they're 
hopefully doing something specific. I mean, we don't want to turn into like a China or something like that where they we force someone to do one thing. But the younger that you can get a kid doing one thing, the much better they're going to be at chunking information. Well, yeah, the sport. hard thing with that is, is like, what are they going to end up liking and doing? Like, right. are you going to have them in, you know, are they going to have them doing something? And that was really my question. Not so much, obviously, yeah, they need to get into something. But I mean, are we talking, do we want them doing like calisthenics, like at a certain age or like what, Everything. what age should they get into the weight room? You know, no. because everybody argues like, ah, you shouldn't, you know, your bones don't stop growing until 12. You can stunt your growth and this and that or whatever. And there's a bunch of different studies that argue things different ways. But I mean, should we have kids, like I said, the, the original question, should they be bailing hay or should they be picking up a barbell? Both. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they should be, it, it, I think it depends on the situation. I don't think I was bailing hay at seven though. I don't think yeah. I was even capable. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was more like junior high ages that you're starting to get into that. But I think every human being that lives needs to be taught a squat, a fundamental squat, mm -hmm. because now kids play video games so long. I've trained junior high kids that look like this, yeah. and, and they can't even do a full overhead squat. And I'm oh, like, dude, you're like 12, so you're 13. They can't do a back extension laying so, on the ground. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, and okay, so the, like let's... The hunch from the text yep. thing. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, let's, like let's we're keep just gonna... them, let's teach them with just even with the PVC pipe, you know, snatch, a clean, just the full overhead squat. I don't care if it's perfect, but, and then and a full squat, like... Those movements are fundamental to every sport and that general, that not even every sport, but to life to have that full range of motion. Like once your joint loses range, range of motion, it's like joint death because another joint's gonna take the burden of that lack of range of motion. Mm -hmm. So I think as general movement experts or movement uh, people in the field, you know, all of us are, we move a lot and we teach it, all of us, teach the full range of motion from a very young age. I don't care how you do it. And so, okay, and it's, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Well, because this day and age we don't have kids running around doing running around a farm swimming i mean i just did anything and everything outside jumping on a trampoline doing flips when i probably shouldn't have because i didn't know how to do yeah. any of the form but since we don't have kids doing that that much anymore getting into a weight room and getting the proper movement patterns down and just basic you know agility training i mean going like i went go back to my injury if i just had basic speed movement patterns um agility training and landing i if my injury was not a uh, contact yeah. it was yeah. literally planting with my leg locked in full speed and just literally tearing everything in my knee yeah. so just basic movement patterns because kids aren't getting what we had when we were younger yeah yeah so well, that leads me to my next question though is do you think that being so specific in those sports can hinder you because I mean, we know that depending on what you do like Definitely. being in this position like this internal rotation as a wrestler or whatever or or constantly working on having like hip flexion yep. from kicking a ball and things like that that can lead to major asymmetries well, look at that can lead to injuries later yeah so perfect yeah hammer thrower all, all, turning left for a decade I do you know whatever but, I've like, done nothing but turn left for the last eight years yeah, and you said, can see it like when my shirt's off or what I'm trying to do uh, like a mobility exercise, you'll see that this side, my left side's considerably more developed than my right, and it's been so a real struggle. The question is, is should we really be focusing less on just trying to get athletes stronger and more on focusing like, okay, what is your sport fucking up about you? Right. And how can we counteract that in the gym room as opposed to like, let's just get your squat up. Well, see, I think, I think it should be I don't think specificity. I don't think kids should be focusing on one sport because no. you can make an educated yeah, guess totally. on what they're going to be the best at, but you don't know. Like, yeah. and you don't I know mean, what they're going to love either. I could, you know, I could have been a guy who was, let's say, Floyd Mayweather, where I focused on boxing from the youngest age a human imaginable, but I would have never been to that level. But wrestling, I could have been pretty damn good, or yeah. Yeah. or weightlifting. So you never know it. So I think keep them on a a broad spectrum in terms of all the sports. I mean, Let I played every, every yeah. sport that was even we could ever do. I mean, literally growing up. And then once I got to high school, you start farther, you know, getting through them, weeding them out. You're choosing because you know what you're good at. Like, I ain't yep. going to go run cross country. I ain't going to be good at that crap. <laughs> yeah. You it's know, it was wrestling, kids. football, yeah. and golf. Like, well, oddly enough, I could be pretty good I at all three. I was 12 when I was like, you yeah. know, obviously I said 10, I'm going to be Tar Heel. But 12 was when I was like, okay, I'm going to go on a travel team. We're going to travel the country. I'm going to go train at the best team in a Atlanta area that I can. Um, that's when... You made the transition. Yes, it would have been helpful, definitely, for me to keep. I mean, obviously, I was right. I was right-footed, uh, more dominant. Obviously, a lot more um, tension on my hip flexor. But if I could balance that out through high school, but also, you know, I made the choice. Soccer is what I love. Well, That's swimming what I'm probably helped that as yeah. well, though. I'm like, going to dedicate I'm... my life to like playing D1 for soccer. So what can help me do that? But also, 
keep my body in check and where it, you know, needs to be mobility-wise. <laughs> Y'all are making wise. me self-conscious that I sounded communist or something, said they need to get specific early. It needs to be their choice, well, obviously. That's the thing, though. Yeah. It's like yeah. all, like all parents, like, parents don't get their kids in a school thinking, like, yeah, he's just going to kind of be okay. Like, yeah. if, if the kid shows any interest in football, they are behind that kid, and they want them to be the best at it, and that's all they're going to do. Well, and I don't yeah. think that's a bad thing. My parents but what I was saying is that yeah. only Same. focusing – yeah, they need to I try all of them. Tennis, baseball, basketball. Because mm-hmm. then you're going to get a bunch – a generation of kids kids that aren't really good at anything you're gonna get a generation of crossfitters yeah right, <laughs> right? you're gonna get a generation of kids that like haters oh, man i know <laughs> what? i'm not a hater guys, i'm just saying not at all. dude i i run across that aren't gym. good at anything <laughs> is that what no, you no, said aren't great at anything hey let's go back right? to about six months no four months ago when justin had you don't hold on a video hold on. about a minivan compared to crossfit because it's like so awesome it was so it was kind of good but yeah. so you wouldn't classify being really good at everything being great like that skill set of being able to be good at six, ten to ten he, different sports. Here's what I'm saying. That's more, that's you're talking way about, more functional. You're like, talking about Floyd being. Mayweather. What I'm saying is that if you get an athlete, uh, you're not going to get <laughs> Dmitry Klokov to be a world champion weightlifter if he only did CrossFit or, right. or if he did all these other sports. Obviously. You have to have that specifics. And so that's what I'm saying. If it's like this, it's this weird line yeah. that you have to walk. But and true. like, no, absolutely not hating on CrossFit. I say CrossFitters at this point, they're doing amazing things and they're going to keep getting better, right? Well, and especially like yeah. Grid League. But what I'm saying is that you're not going to get somebody to go to the Olympics on gymnastics by doing CrossFit. Right. Or, or, no. or if they're playing yes. baseball yeah. and, and, and football and basketball and all these other things, at some point they have to find out where am I the strongest at and I have to forget all these other things and I have to focus on this. Yes, true. But when you do that, you're going to create an athlete that is, you know, by definition, it, kind of like a you know a one trick pony. Trades. Well, yeah. yeah, right. And you want that jack of all trades athlete for CrossFit. And then when you look at it from just a human perspective on which is more useful, if you throw Floyd Mayweather and Rich Froning in the wilderness and say survive, which one do you think is going to win? <laughs> yeah. Like which one do you think is going to survive for longer? The guy Floyd because he's going to punch it. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> the guy who's been hitting a bag for twenty years, or the guys that've been out there and doing absolutely everything they can get their hands on. Definitely that guy. Well, it's mainly Rich, just because he knows how to shoot a gun. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's, yeah, a country, and he's a country arrows, boy. Maybe yeah. that was a bad he's example a because yeah. he's yeah, he knows everything. Uh, whatever. I don't know enough CrossFitters <laughs> to be able to make an like an apt analogy. So, so yeah. but no, I you're right. You, you agree. Like, and that's to be a best life. But then again, it comes back to like, what are your goals? What do you want to do? And you know, as a parent, what should you do for your children? I mean, you want them to have everything, but but like we said, but you like, also want them to go through those trials. I wouldn't have become the person I am if I didn't have trials as a kid and I think it's very important like the parents don't give their kid everything because then they're not going to be able to you know make choices as an adult you know you don't grow up with those struggles you don't get those life experiences you're not going to be in a position to dedicate yourself to this because why why would you dedicate yourself to anything if everything's always been handed to you it's like why would I have to put all this practice time in I can just go do this or whatever I have the money to do it no. And, you know, you don't get great athletes that way. I, no. I think the general consensus is you need to give the children, the youth of America, a chance to do everything, but make them do something. Yeah. Like, make them do everything. Make them try it. And if they don't want to do it, that's fine. But you need to be able to push that. And you, you need to, damn it, you need to not be scared to <laughs> let your kid pick up a barbell and go mm-hmm. do something that maybe you didn't do or maybe you were scared of. Like, right. you can't be scared of CrossFit. You can't be scared of, of scared of weight training because, you know, like Brandon was saying in a couple podcasts ago or whatever, like, it, you know, oh, I don't want my kids to pick up weights. Like, mm. his book bag weighs 50 pounds, right. asshole. Yep. Like, what do you think that's doing to him? He's doing a rucksack every time he goes to second True. period. And like, if or, you don't or, give that kid some glutes and some proper lower back strength <laughs> from doing squats, he is screwed when he gets to sixth grade and they start giving him real textbooks. No, really? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Absolutely. So you have to force them to do something. They have to do something because in like where we are in America right now, there's so many distractions with the phone, with all the apps and all this stuff. You give a kid that, I had a Game Boy Color and I really liked that Game Boy Color. At a Game Gear. If, at that age, if you had given me an iPhone, if you had given Sorry guys, had a little bit of a technical difficulty while I was on my rant. We got so jacked that we just we broke the recording. <laughs> I device. got mad. I'm just too much testosterone. I just yeah. threw shit. <laughs> she she broke it. But uh, no, well, what we were talking about, like the kids with the technology, it's like yeah, you have to sometimes force them to do some sports because without it, there there's so many distractions that they wouldn't even think to go outside. I mean, it might not even be the case for much longer. 
that video games don't look as good as outside. So it's very important to get them into sports. It's very important to let them try everything and find somewhere where they're going to succeed. Well, I think the opposite of what needs to happen. I mean, okay, yes, they're using these devices and they're using them in school instead of books now or whatever. And we're, we're having this bad, like Kelly Starrett talk, you know, the, the text kyphosis it's internally the rotated down and everything like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, but the more kids do that, the more you have to counteract it with activity True. instead of the less. Right, because like the more they're doing this, the less activity they're doing. The opposite needs to happen. You need to for like it's okay, you know. Like technology is here. Like you don't have to like unplug and be like a fucking no. Amish. I mean, don't but hide you need brother. to counteract whatever you're doing. Your inactivity with that much more activity. Yeah, true. I mean, it, and it's like yeah, you're not going to be able to stop technology. And I'm not saying by any means that we need to go into some kind of Amish state. But you need to let them know how great the world really is it's like they're looking at this video game going how is that possible you take them out into the night sky and go have you seen that that goes on forever <laughs> like just try yeah. to get them to realize that, that there's a also billion a lot of years cool old there is a there's a video there's a i think it was on nickelodeon or something like that which is ironic because it was on tv and they were talking about like all oh, the new things virtual reality is like the brand new things out it's even better than virtual reality it's called actual reality yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know just like, get them and show them all the cool stuff i mean even yeah you can being, smell shit out here <laughs> you can well, touch it being a garage athlete i have a chiropractor um eric richards for health sprout and he shout out to eric shout out to eric eric's health health sprout.com <laughs> <laughs> i've actually uh my dad's a chiropractor so i've grown up with that luxury in my basement um so even now it's been like a couple years I've what texting started my like freshman year of college. Yeah, when you had to like hit the hit the button four times to get to the S. To the T nine. Yeah, T nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that like, was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so just in that time span, even having a chiropractor and not having that technology my entire life, Eric's even now like, uh, if you're gonna be good at CrossFit, we gotta like straighten that. You know, I'm still getting that it's yeah. a little out of line from leaning forward too much. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my um working for play i drive a lot so that well, i didn't have that at all and but i had a desk job where i was like this on a phone and like this and you know my spine is twisted this way and it looks like a you backwards up, three yeah. you like, like at the beginning of a thriller video and yeah, it hasn't like, even been that long and i've had that athletic structure for years and it still affects me so mm -hmm. it's just crazy to think that you know we do need to counterbalance it for sure and but here's the thing though is that if we're going to do that we need much higher standards and levels of coaching inside schools true instead of these i mean coaches don't even know how to show kids how to do a proper squat right, right? and i'm not i mean i'm not saying everyone right like ben williams regionals athlete he's yeah. a coach imagine Whoever, having those him kids, in my high school i know right here. those kids are under him they've got it set up because he is a good coach he's a good athlete he knows what it takes to do the right things yeah. but i mean if these kids are coming in like you would probably don't need to have them squatting if they're if they're jacked up and they can't do it without going to their yeah. toes you need to address Mobility those things first. first and i mean i i don't know if it's going to happen I, I don't know if it'll ever happen well that's why i was saying but, we need to get legitimate weightlifting coaches into college programs because they're going to make football players baseball players basketball players that much better and this is i think crossfit's opening up the avenue for what used to be a really neat sport it's like olympic weightlifting in the area where it can become mainstream and in the area where really high level olympic lifting coaches are valued at a college university at a d1 school where they're going to be able to make their athletes bigger faster stronger without uh, like the administration having to freak out that they're going to hurt themselves in the weight room because if you teach it right you're not going to hurt yourself. To bounce off that, so what I do, I work for, it's play, it's a performance flooring, and we do like weight rooms. That's our biggest thing. Um, Y'all did UGAs, right? I saw we that. We did, yeah. We We're do a lot dope. of high-level schools, collegiate schools is really where we've built our brand and company off of, but I get to see through all of this and traveling and my territory, I have seen so many high schools just putting in a legit weight room and i every time i go there awesome. i tell the coach i'm like this is awesome if so i would have had you this you think it's happening i think it's happening there's hope yeah. um there's hope in my high school it was like a couple rusty barbells and like not even barbells dumbbells a couple rusty dumbbells put that over your head as many times yeah. as you can and yeah. then i went to coffees obviously it was yeah much better, i but. i mean even i had a in georgia now what is it i think they're considered 6a schools now because yeah. they changed from 5a well i had a huge school but we still don't have that when I was from where I'm from, I mean, we didn't have a, a legit weight room, but now, I mean, even with the field I'm in, I'm seeing it happen and it's, it's pretty awesome. And just getting good equipment into gyms that are already there. I know that coffees is way different now than it was when I was in high school. I yeah. mean, I got tapeworm 
Well, in high school, <laughs> Rick, obviously, but it's all clean now, and it looks great. I mean, getting good equipment is a first step, and it's definitely good, but I think getting knowledgeable people in there and, and mm-hmm. not letting just, you know, anybody, you know, teach this and, and have a different program or have a better program in yeah. at a high school level True. or maybe even before that, I think, is, is more important because, I mean, like I said, the general consensus, I think, is that, yes, you need to get kids moving, you know, as soon as possible, mm-hmm. but it needs to be the right way and you need to make sure that it's well-rounded. Like, you don't just need to have them doing something specific and just it, – it, it's not just for football players. You oh, know no. what I mean? No. Like, I mean, and that tends to be what it happens what happens like you see wherever you're at like here in East Cobb or in Georgia or whatever it's baseball yep right or like lacrosse getting bigger but mm-hmm. like it needs to be all sports you need to push that across mm-hmm. all programs like I went to uh, it was Texas was for a clinic I was in um, a part of and they had a female weight room this is high school a female weight room and a men's weight well I guess Sexist. girls and boys weight room the girls weight room is just yoga mats and no it was the exact <laughs> It was the exact copy, just a little bit less uh, racks. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm going. Right. I'm all over the place over here. <laughs> she's, she's I don't know jacked. what to do. I'm so tall. She's doing her warm up. Yeah. She's doing the Pilates thing. I'm looking thing down on the, people. Yeah. <laughs> We're all getting jacked up, like just the right amount of jack to where I can hopefully hit another PR today. Or yeah. Tomorrow. So. so I'm like. But okay, so let's. I, I want to talk about. Uh, we were talking about movies the other night, mm-hmm. and um, hey Nate, you know what I want to watch tonight? Uh, Ex Machina. Ex Machina. <laughs> so <sighs> Nate, I, I still haven't seen the movie. Nate apparently loves that movie. So really good. Well, it's interesting. It's just I, I like movies that make me think. I think we were talking on the last podcast. It's like my Netflix queue is all documentaries, and my music playlist in my car. It's not music. It's all podcasts. So anything that makes me think, I'm really jazzed up about. And Ex Machina is just that right, like psychological thriller where at the end you go, man, technology's gonna kill. Us. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, I, I want to hear what Jared's got in his queue because I like asking everybody. I want to oh, see what I'm, what I'm missing here. I heard mm. you talk about The Office a lot. House? Uh, the Office is good. House is my favorite TV show. Okay. The other. Uh, you and John are both watching that right now. Well, I got him on to up it. on the phone. Next I turned to each him onto oh. it. Okay. I've been a fan of House since it started. So a long oh, wow. time. High school, I'd spend all my time watching it. So it's I been on for all a while. How long has it been on? A long time. I don't know. I own all eight seasons on DVD. Well, did John get you to watch all the classic movies that you've missed? I've seen some of them. I've watched the first half of Godfather. Yeah. Um, See, this nonsense. I remember I tuned into a weightlifting talk probably a year or so ago where y'all are talking. And he's like listing off with like the best Nash movies like, of yeah. all time. And he hadn't seen any, any of them. them. I know. And well, John's best movies of all time are just so suspect. No, I'm but, talking uh, about legitimate best movies Scandal. Of all time. No, you were there that night Scandal, before that podcast. The TV show. Oh, my gosh. Legit. Oh, my what is it? became best Parents Parents and House of Cards. House of Cards. But Scandal's, uh, Scandal's Scandal. even better than House of Cards. Is that the really? Netflix original I, Scandal? No, it's on... Uh, ABC. ABC, okay, yeah. But What's so about? House is always going to be number one. I can't let Hugh Laurie go. His no. his comedy is just my style. It's never Scandal loop, it's never is lupus. just the greatest ever. I mean, the government's going to get us, and uh, there's okay. ways to get around it. Okay. Just, and Olivia Pope and is And then House of oh, Cards. Yeah, she's and then House of Cards, the government's going to get us. There's no way around it. Yes. <laughs> so those are my three shows. <laughs> and the government made all those shows. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So for movies, I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of great ones lately. So you're, you're more of a TV great one guy on Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a big TV guy in general. I mean, I've been having... Um, so you don't watch actual television. I don't think anybody does that anymore. I don't, but... It's uh, like buying albums. The second right, that TiVo Nate? came out and you could start fast-forwarding through commercials, it was game over for me. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of crime shows, though. But really? I get nightmares. Like, like the first you get nightmares. Yeah, dude, like somebody's in my house and I'm like waking up like, okay, there's my knife. Can, can you do, can you do horror your movies? Pillow. I can't do horror because movies Because well. there's this show, uh, Lieutenant Joe Kenda on ID. Um... And all the he was a, a detective who solved almost three hundred mur- or almost four hundred murder crimes. It's a real guy, a real guy really? in Colorado Springs. Oh, jeez, where that's I'm horrible. from. So he, they always give the address, and I'm like, I, I pull up my phone instantly at the start of the episode, and I'm like, <laughs> where is this? Is this by my house? That's not good And the good one for was you. literally like. 0.6 miles. The that gas station I stop at almost every day, and every mm-hmm. time I get gas, the murder happened in that parking we lot. We talked about that it. Can't though. be good for your chi, dude. Try no. living in Memphis when another four, when 48 hours or the first 48. The first is on. 48. <laughs> every oh, episode man. is in Memphis. Memphis actually <laughs> sued that. Um, that Memphis show. sued that show, saying that it was painting Memphis in a bad light. Tom Segura and basically everyone was like, "No, show. Memphis is painting Memphis in a bad light because <laughs> yeah. the shit actually happened. <laughs> right. yeah, if it was like, like make believe, yeah, 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 it would have been. Oh man, you're hurting. It's like we couldn't. Find, those people yeah. died. We couldn't yeah. find any murder cases anywhere else but Memphis. It See, was just, yeah. <laughs> but for me, though, it doesn't have to be real for me to be scared. Like, I usually, I'm much better now. I can't do horror movies. And when I was at Illinois, they made me watch uh, the first 
Friday the 13th or whatever. And then they pulled it up. It was in Illinois, and it was like three counties away. And I freaked out. They had someone yeah. bang on the door, and I cried, and it was terrible. So what about you, Brittany? What, what's in your queue? Same thing? Scandal? Scandal. How to Get Away with Murr. That's a good one. Oh yes. God, so legit. That is what? a good but Don't show. you and Elise watch like the same show? What is it like? The one like Pretty Little? Uh, pretty Little. P-L-L. <laughs> Are you talking about PLL? Yeah, I guess so. Pretty Little Liars. It's ABC Family. <clears throat> Hopefully you boys don't watch that. What happens? <laughs> What's the show about? So A is this mysterious. Okay, from start right, to finish. The girls have letters. I'm done. I know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's, it's cool. I, I, yeah, yeah, name I is a. the last five minutes Dude, of every episode because I walk upstairs and I'm like, are you done watching the show yet, honey? They're like, yeah, it's almost over. I'm like, All right. I'm going to go get in bed. But yeah. It's going to go <laughs> yeah. be not where people are letters. It's, yeah. it's so No, bad. I tuned out the second you said that. So no, it's yeah, not well, happening. What's uh, what's in your queue then? Uh, me, ugh, dude. Um, trailer Park Boys. Yeah, Trailer Park Boys and wrestling right now. <laughs> hey, can yeah. we I not watch, forget about Friends? Please? I watch a lot about. Friends. Oh, I mean, I watch. I mean, Friends is one of my favorite. It depends, man. I go on like I, I'll go, I'll get on a Cheers kick, and I'll just watch like a season of Cheers, or I'll watch mm-hmm. a season of Friends. Like I like the old Friends. school. I grew shows. up on. I grew up on Frasier. My parents loved watching Frasier. <sighs> it was a little bit like kind of past. Like I watched Friends because like I was a little kid and my parents watched it. Yeah, like, and well, that's, that's was before. Friends, or dude. not friends. I meant Cheers. I watched Cheers because you know that, but like Frazier, Frazier came right off of was Cheers. after it. Yeah, so spinoff or whatever. Um, but I didn't really watch a whole lot of it. But I know I, I acknowledge it as a really good show. It was a really good sitcom. It's I just really, really well written. Into. That's what I like about like yeah. most of the stuff that I really enjoy is st- like stuff like House of Cards, where you can tell that the time has really been put into the writing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah, not so like Jersey Shore's like you're so stupid. <laughs> that for an hour. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that um, we've uh, what was that? I mean, Blacklist, but that's pretty. We're caught up with oh. that. Now, um, which is just because I love James Spader. <laughs> I think she's, she likes that one. Yeah, the the, the <laughs> voice of so Ultron from the new Avengers movie, dude's just. Got, I still haven't seen just, that. Oh, dude, so. Have you watched Blacklist at all? Yeah, I've watched Blacklist. Yeah, you gotta check. That guy out was in the Office for a while. That guy was okay, uh, yeah. James Spader. Yeah, James yeah. Spader. Yeah. Um, okay, well, so I, let's wrap up here real quick. We've got a we got a uh, we got, got a workout to do. We have, we have a workout to do. But uh, last question is: When you think of the word success. What is the the first person that comes to mind? And then Oof. tell me why. God, that's a deep one. Uh, Let's go to Brittany first. From Netflix. Can I ha- can I stall and go to Brittany first? Yeah, I don't know. Do you have one? Yeah, I do. Oh gosh, mm. I do. Is it A from Pretty Little Liars? It's not A. <laughs> no one knows who A is, so. Oh, that's right. That's the dead girl, right? Yeah, she's okay. dead, but she's not. Sorry. Yeah, last five minutes of every episode. Nope. Yep. Done. <laughs> All right. When I think of success, who do I think of? Yeah. Abby Wambach. Abby Wambach. Okay. For okay. anybody who doesn't know her, player? explain it. Yeah. Uh, soccer player. Okay. She played at Florida. Um, she just retired from the women's national team after they just world won the World Cup uh, this past week. So what what's her story? What is so? Why why do you consider her the most successful person? Or? Being a well, when it comes to ath- like athletics, um, a specimen number one for female soccer players. She's thirty five and. Oh wow still a badass yeah. and just the knowing what it takes just to get to the level that I was for collegiate soccer for females yeah. and what it takes to I'm coming to a point where the people I played in college now are two of the girls that are on the field for the World Cup oh, that's awesome. yeah. um, especially coming from the ACC and those schools so it's almost so long, the longevity in that high in level that competitive high level sport. I mean yeah. I think like I'm, I'm 23 I'm at my prime for preparing for regionals and hopefully taking it to the games but when I think of what my body feels like after that many years of soccer mm-hmm. yeah. and my knees as y'all have been hearing them like um, just 10. It, yeah. it, it's just amazing to have that drive and it's it's beautiful yeah, cool. oh, nice I could tear up Jared, about it. gosh I mean well the first thing I mean somebody like obviously my dad pops into mind like okay uh, you know raise the family Supports the family, always there. Every single wrestling meet I ever did, like that's that's the definition of success to me. In that, living the way you want, um, you know, being happy with the family, you know, living the right way, that sort of thing. You know, is is an athlete. I mean, I guess it would be the longevity thing, but it's probably my dad. I mean, did he have a sweet beard too? Because that's how I judge. No, he didn't. No, (laughs) No. he always shaved. Um, Oh man, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but maybe as an athlete, you just got to imagine what his beard would have been like, Mm. considering he's. I mean, he's your father. He used to have one. I look a lot like him. Do you? He used to have one pretty good. But uh, as an athlete, probably Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady. Ooh, even Actually, after the footballs. Uh, even or Bill Belichick. But it doesn't have to be athletes. See, that's the, that, that's what I, I want to find out. Like okay, everybody Donald, has Donald different. Trump. Yeah. Okay. You like Donald Trump? <laughs> Are you going to vote for him in the upcoming election? <laughs> I just my, knew that was going to be a reaction. I, my idea of success is bad toupees. No, yeah. but that's why I, it, it's it's really interesting to see what everyone's idea of success hmm. is because everybody's different. Yeah. Some people judge it financially. Some people judge it, like you said, like on a on a personal relationship level, yeah, you know, as a family. Some people judge it athletically mm-hmm. and like how what high level of achievement they have. So it's it's just curious, and or I'm, I'm always curious to find out what people consider success. Yeah. So yeah. The, I mean, the first one that popped in my head was my dad, and then yeah. I was trying to think who I was more impressed with or what would mean more success to me and it, nothing really popped who, up but i just gave an example as an athlete because she did right. so well yeah so let yeah an athlete wh- who was the most influential athlete for you growing up then like wh- what what figure tiger woods. influenced you most really what, yeah no doubt tiger woods he's wow. still my favorite athlete huh even yeah. his off the field issues whatever off the yeah why is issues. that though oh i mean because i grew up watching golf okay, and i yeah. would see him every single sunday because my dad was a big golf fan and i'd see him you know just dominate on sundays and for that period of time. Do you was think he played multiple school sports in school? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, it's probably not. Yeah, I, don't think I mean, so. in some ways, for a lot of people, I think that Tiger Woods is off the off the field stuff made him, you know, more believable, more human, and that makes his accomplishments even that more impre- like that much more impressive when you have those temptations there and you still dedicate yourself and you get that. What about now? Because he's kind of in his twilight, right? Well, yeah. So he hasn't won a major since 08. Torrey Pines on his uh, reconstructed Jeez. ACL and his broken. He won that on a you torn ACL about, and a t- broken tibia. So he hasn't won a major since then. You think about golf being like, it's like, oh, yeah, he tore his whatever. He's just swinging a golf club. But no, that makes a huge oh, difference. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, people, everybody's kind of written him out. He's been, hasn't won in seven years a major. Uh, but I think he's going to win. I think he'll, he'll make a comeback. I think he, I mean, this year, I think he will win one major, which is a pretty bold prediction considering his recent track history. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I think he will. I think he'll make a comeback. I mean, I think he'll be back into it. I think this this whole scandal did significantly impact his psyche and his kind of unbreakable uh, mental toughness. Because and for golf, that's like. He's missed more cuts in the last three, everything. four years than he did in his entire 13-year pro career before that. Literally, yeah. in, in two years, he's missed more. So success more, so. for you is. Dad, Tiger Woods, Tim, uh, Tom Brady. Yeah. There you go. Cool. I like it. Yeah. All right. So, well, all right, guys, uh, make sure you go to garageathletes.com and uh, check out the new Driven series that's going to be coming out. This is the first podcast, the mm-hmm. first episode of the Driven series. We're going to be having videos, too, of training at uh, cool places. We're going to go up to Colorado. We'll train with Jared again up there. Yes, get sir. some video content of that. A bunch of different barbell clubs, uh, grid people, CrossFitters, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, if that's, you see us out of the games, make sure to say, hey, uh, yeah. we'll be out there for the majority of it. I think we're getting in like a day or so late but we'll be there for the whole time and we'll be hanging out and podcasting with some pretty cool people so yeah check us out uh we'll be putting everything on youtube and itunes uh check out garageathletes.com want to give a shout out to sweat equity got the new swag oh, in so the first video yeah. we figured we had to video this one got some good swag coming out for that i was um, pretty happy with how the shirts turned out and I'm, I'm happy to be able to get them on some real life people so it's not just an idea in my head anymore but uh you'll be able to get those soon website will be up within the next week or so and you'll be able to get some pre-orders in uh I mean, you know, judging by what these guys said, it's going to go fast. I mean, I'm really happy with how they turn out. It's a good looking shirt. So, you know, hop on. Best shit ever. It will put 20 kilos on your total. I did PR in my first time training in the shirt yesterday. So I, I hit a PR for the first time I had in a while. I hit that 141. And hopefully, with and that was before I learned all the cool stuff. That was before <laughs> I realized everything I was doing wrong, which was a lot. Yeah. So speaking of that, I'm going to let Jared, uh, let's let's pimp this uh, seminar that we got because this is really good stuff. I'm excited. Great, we great. don't have a date when it's actually coming out yet because we're filming it right now. We're about to go finish filming it um, and do the little photo shoot for it. Um, but uh, it won't be too long after the games. We'll have it out. And uh, where can they get all that stuff at? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll update everybody on all my social media at mm-hmm. Jared, Jared Enderton. Uh, but my Facebook's jaredenderton.com too. So uh, just check those out. We'll be updating you with it. The launch date won't be very long, but we also don't want to launch it too soon when the product isn't complete and we're not yeah. going to provide the most value. So uh, I'll keep you updated on that. We don't have a launch date, but uh, in, and that's Jared Enerton on everything. So at Jared Enerton on Twitter, at Jared Enerton on Instagram, and then Jared Enerton on Facebook and yep. MySpace and MySpace and yeah. Zanga, <laughs> Zanga, Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Brittany. Where can they follow you at and uh, and and play? Okay, so uh, my Instagram is Britt Beaumont with and, two T's. And if you like dogs, and if you like dogs, you like dogs. 
you you really should follow me because oh wait you're a crossfitter with a dog I am <laughs> you're we are so I've it never hasn't seen that been, before it hasn't been done before <laughs> I've never seen it before <laughs> except my golden is like eight so I'm ahead of the game okay you yeah. have to spell Beaumont by the way oh Beaumont B E A U M O N T so it's like B E A U like beautiful and then Mont Mont well, I just picture it like a really beautiful. proper southern like Beaumont like with that southern accent well yeah. my middle name's Virginia so oh you know Miss Virginia oh Miss Virginia, Miss Virginia. Beaumont is the <laughs> sweetest little thing oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so guys just so you know Beaumont means beautiful mountain in French oh so. okay so I think it makes sense. was that a quad reference that Were was powerful Mount, quads yeah qu- ma- beautiful mountain yeah <laughs> okay okay and so it's can, Brit Beaumont uh, or. Uh, Facebook is Brittany Beaumont, but yep. um, everything for play is on my social media accounts. So Heck yeah, and give you me can a check shout. out all that stuff. I'm on Instagram at the underscore lowdown l o e d o w n uh, Nathan Low L O E on Facebook. Uh, Sweat Equity popping off soon. I'll make sure you guys uh, are the first to get the link for that, and then you can check out garage coach jm at garage coach jm if you want to see whatever justin's doing yeah, and at garage athletes as well if at garage athletes on instagram. instagram and um twitter if you're not if you're listening to this and you're not following us shame on you yeah, you're fired you should be <laughs> donald trump you're fired you're, you're fired, fired. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys another one in the books thank you guys for coming out let's go train driven series 2015 see you